Hello, I'm Eric Rano, and in this video for tipsquirrel.com, I'm going to use some tips and tricks for the transform tool to make this dartboard. Okay, let's jump into Photoshop and see how we get on. First thing I want to do is go to my shape tools and I'm going to choose the line tool and using a simple gray, here we go, um, about four pixels wide, I'm going to draw a line down my document. Okay, I'm holding shift just to constrain it to a straight line and let go. Okay, good. Now that's one line, but I'm going to need several more. So I'm going to control J to duplicate, then control T to transform. And we get all these lovely options at the top here. Now, a simple maths tells me that 360 degrees, I need 20 segments. It tells me that our each segment is 18 degrees each. So here we go. In this dialog box here, I can tell Photoshop to transform this, rotate it by 18 degrees. And it's rotated it from the center, and that's governed by this icon here. We can anchor it to any of those points, but for me, the center is just fine. It's 18 degrees, and I click the tick to accept all that. Okay, let's control J to duplicate that. This time, I'm gonna to go to Edit and Transform Path. And then at the top of this flyout menu, it says again. It's going to do the tr same transformation again. And sure enough, there it is, another 18 degree rotation. Now you may have noticed there was a shortcut keys for that. So let's control J to duplicate that and use the shortcut keys. Shift, control and T, uh, shift, command, T on the Mac. And there we are, easy as that. But let's make it even easier. Let's add in another modifier key. So. I'm going to press Shift, Control, Alt. And notice I haven't duplicated this time because if I press T, it's going to add it to the same layer. And that's very handy. So I'm going to keep my hands on my fingers on Shift, Control, and Alt. And I'm just going to keep tapping T until I get the amount I want. And there we are, all on the same shape layer. Very nice indeed. Okay, with my Shape 1, copy 3 highlighted. I can shift and click on Shape 1. Control E, Command E on the Mac. We'll mush them all down onto a single layer. Okay, that's looking good. I need this to be right in the center of the document for the rest of this. So um, I'm going to choose the Move tool. Control A to select all. And then with this Shape 1, copy 3, which I'm now going to call Spokes, I can then come up here and I can align it horizontally and vertically. So it's horizontally aligned and vertically aligned. And now I know that that is slap bang wallop right in the middle. Control D to deselect. I'm going to need a few circles to make my doubles and trebles. So let's go and get a circle or an ellipse. And this time I don't want to fill it. So I want no fill. I do want a stroke of that gray again of four points. And then I can use my guides, one there, one there, good, to bring up the guides. Obviously, I've used guide guide there. If you if you haven't got a guide guide, you can always go and make a new guide at 50% horizontal, 50% vertical. And I'm going to draw out uh, an ellipse from the center, if I can keep steady enough. Hold shift down to constrain it, and when I get to the outer part of my spokes, I just let go. And there we have it. There's our first circle. I'm going to press Control H to hide the guides. Next, I'm going to click on the ellipse one tool, Control J to duplicate it, and then Control T to bring up my transform. And what I need to do now is just make this smaller. In fact, it's going to be about 90-ish percent, I think. So let's try 90% of the width and 90% height. And that looks not bad. So let's try it a bit smaller, 93 and 93. That looks better. And I click the tick to accept that. And there we go, that's our doubles done. Control J, Control T. So now we've got a copy of that inner circle and we can make the top of the trebles. This time we go to maybe 60%. Okay, and 60%. Maybe that's a bit too small. Now, rather than keep going the width and the height, I'm going to click on this link here, which means anything I do to one 
will be in, done into the other. So let's go to 65 maybe. 65%, that's a bit better. So I click the tick there. Okay, and then Control J, Control T, and I can then make that a bit smaller. Again, I'm going to link them together and let's go for 90% that time and that's good. Let's click the tick. I'm going to rush through the next bit, Control J, Control T, because now you're fully well aware of what I'm doing and I'm going to go for maybe 30%, 30%, click the tick, Control J, Control T, and then I can link it and 50% of those and there we go we've got all our links done good stuff okay now I'd like all those to be on one layer now because they're a bit of a mishmash of different paths what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the background layer for now so I've only got the the spokes and the, the circles visible and I'm going to fly go to this flyout menu and I'm going to get a verge verge visible hmm or I could merge visible. There we go. If I turn the background back on, we can see that it's all part of one layer. Good. Now, any darts players amongst you will realize that that's not quite right because the 20 should be straight up. So they're just slightly off kilter. Not a problem. Let's control T to transform. And we want to make it half a segment turn. If a full segment is 18, then we need to turn it by nine degrees. Click the tick. And there we are. We're all done. I'm going to duplicate that layer, Control J. I'm going to rename this bottom layer color, spell it any way you like. I like to put a U in it. And I'm going to make this one the wire. There we go. And now I can double click on the wire layer and I can add a quick bevel and emboss. Um, about 120-ish on the uh, depth and the size wants to be quite small at about three pixels and soften it just very slightly. Click OK. It looks a bit jaggy there, but if I come into 100%, um, yeah, that's looking nice. That's better. A reason why I made a copy was so that I could use the back layer to do my coloring. So I've just turned the wire layer off and on my color layer, I can choose my red and can get the paint bucket tool and I can start painting in where I need it to be. Let's try that again. There we go. I'm still not used to the pointer on the on the bucket. I'm still trying to paint with the paint that's coming out of the bucket. Anyway, so there we go. Um, I could go through and do all the colouring on that. Um, I've got my swatches here. In fact, I've got my uh, cream colour, which would go in there. And the black, of course, for the other segments. And so it would go on and the green would go in here. It's actually something very relaxing about doing that. There we go. And when I turn the wire back on, you can see it looks like the wire. And there we are. So I've used the transform tools to make a very, very simple dartboard. I'm not going to take you through the rest of it. It's a bit dull, really. But when you've been working on it for a little while, it should hopefully look something like this. And there we go. I'm Eric Reno. And this was a video for tipsquirrel.com where all the content is free because all the contributors to Tipsquirrel contribute for free. So please feel free to share this with your friends and let them know that there is this great resource there completely free of charge. Thank you for bearing with me. I'll see you next time.